welcome to the Berea Podcast. This is Troy. I'm going solo again this week. I am getting ready to walk into the Knight's Lounge. I want to see what's going on in here. Opening the door. Seems pretty busy. All right. As you walk in over to the left, there's some artwork that's actually for sale. Um, very colorful, very interesting, and there's lots of these cards everywhere. I want to know what all of these are, but there's artwork, walking sticks. I'll have to ask you about the walking sticks. But you can hear there's there's a party going on right here. Hi there, Hi. do you have a second to talk? Yeah. All righty, well, my name's Troy. This is the Berea Podcast. Introduce yourselves, please. Hey, I'm, I'm Dennis Sparks. I'm one of the owners of Knight's Lounge, and oh. uh, this is my wife, Kina. Hi, good. How are you? I'm doing good. Good, good, good. So you're at the desk here sorting cards. I saw lots of cards as I walked in. Tell me what this game is. Um, so, so this this game, uh, the cards that she's sorting right now, is for Magic: The Gathering. Um, so, Magic: The Gathering is a fantasy-based strategy game. Okay. Um, so, so basically, you're uh, you're pretending that you're in this fantasy world, right, and that you're a powerful wizard that travels the different dimensions of the multiverse, collecting spells and lands to fuel your spells. So that's you, the person. That's not the right. card, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and and then you're you're using those spells to battle against other similar wizards. These wizards are called planeswalkers. Okay, so so you play as a planeswalker. Okay. Now there are also planeswalker cards. Okay. Um, so storyline wise, you know you're you're basically just calling for the help of another planeswalker, and they come down. They have a lot of abilities that, so that they, help you out in your. Fight. It's like you, like when I played Rook as a kid. There was a dummy hand, somebody that's not really there, but playing in the game, not right. a real person. Right. So so yeah. Um, so the planes Walker cards can sort of act as that dummy hand. Um, let's see if I I don't have any in, any okay. real real handy to just show you the example, but it's it's a card that that you would play, and then it has several abilities that you can choose from. You can use one of those abilities each. Time. Alrighty, you lost me at about the point where you talked about being a, a planeswalker. Okay. So how does it play? Like I sit down at a table and I have a deck of cards. Mm -hmm. How is it played? So, so the the goal the goal of the game is that uh, that you and your opponent each start with twenty life. Okay. Um, and your goal is to reduce your opponent's life total to zero. Okay. Um, so the way the way you do that is by casting spells that cause them to lose life or take damage, um, and by uh, attacking with creatures. Okay. Um, so that's that's the two ways. And those are on the cards, and yeah. it will tell you like what yeah. to do. And uh, so so let's see. So this this would be a creature card. Okay. okay? What's um, the name of the creature? Uh, the name of the creature is Overgrown Arasaur. Okay. Um, and this is just one that I picked up randomly that, that she was sorting. Sure. Um, so this this creature has four attack and four defense. Okay. Um, so and that's the, on the card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's down in the bottom right of the card. Um, so so the four four attack means that um, when when you attack with this creature, you basically say go get him, and it, he he goes after your opponent. Okay. Um, so if if that attack is successful and nothing nothing happens in between, then the opponent's life total would go from twenty to sixteen. All right. So I have that in my hand, mm -hmm. and I, someone starts and they just put a card down that says, "I'm going to attack with this overgrown avatar." Amrasaur. 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 Sorry, sorry. And uh, what do they do? Okay. Okay. So, so the uh, now at the at the point um, there there is uh, something else to this card that's worth mentioning, okay. um, and that is the mana cost. Um, so uh, now the mana cost. Uh, it's see. another part of the card another that you look at. Yeah, it's up a, up in the top right, um, and typically there's a number and then a couple of symbols associated. Okay. Um, so so the symbols tell you what colors you need to to play the card. Um, okay. So uh, this this land, for example, uh, Windscarred Crag. It enters the battlefield tapped and can can tap for. You'll see the red symbol and then you'll see the white symbol. Um, so now this this card right here requires green symbols, right? So, so you have to have certain requirements to play this card yes. that's in the upper right hand corner. Right. Does it hurt you at all if it's got a number in the upper right hand corner? So so what you do is you combine the number with how many symbols there are. So this this card it it has a three and then two green symbols. Okay. So the card's total casting cost is five. Okay. Two of those have to be from something that produces green. 
the other three can be from a land that produces any kind. So in that hypothetical situation, I would have to have five cards to play my overgrown yes. Amrasar. Okay. Yeah, and the, the lands, the rules behind the lands is that you play one each turn. Okay. So, But so, like, is there anything that the other person can do to stop my overgrown Amrasar from... Right. So, so you've you know you've you've set up the requirement to cast it. Gotcha. Um, it's been on the board for a turn, and then you have attacked with it. What your opponent can do, let's say they they have a creature on their side of the board. Okay. okay. So we'll we'll use uh, carry on screecher as, okay. as the example. Okay. That was exactly what I was going to say. Carry on screecher. Yep. Okay. Um, so this is this is a four four cost uh, three and one black zombie okay. bird. Um, so this this does have an ability which we'll we'll get into momentarily. Um, but uh, the now, the but I see down in the lower right hand corner there's a three, so it would do three damage. Right. Okay. So, so this uh, this this creature would would deal three damage, and it has a, a toughness of one. And okay. we'll get into toughness in just a moment. Um, so so I have attacked with with this overgrown armor sword, which which has four power and four toughness. Okay. My my opponent has a creature with three power and one toughness on the board. Okay. So they they could say either this creature is valuable to me and I don't don't want to you know throw it in front of this big trampling you know or you know this big, dinosaur big thing. large dinosaur right right um, or my life total is important and I'm going to use this to protect it. Now okay. if they make that decision, okay, um, what they'll do is they'll they'll say that they are blocking with the carry-on creature. Okay. okay. So, then you get in get into a combat situation. All right. right. So, so when this creature blocks this creature, that four damage that would have been going to the player okay. instead goes goes to the creature. Okay. Um, so even though now this this creature has one toughness, that's basically the creature's life points. Okay. The difference between your life points and a creature's toughness is that that will reset it at the end of each turn. All right. So let me pose the hypothetical. Mm-hmm. So they throw that four, throw that four down. Mm-hmm. The person throws the the one card. It yep. takes one away from there. What affects the player, the planeswalker, right? right? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, all right, and so, it just goes until there's zero from twenty down to zero, and there's a loser, right? Okay. Now, oh, and uh, so, so yeah, so this uh, this one toughness, right? See, all four of this damage, if this creature blocks, right, um, all four of that damage will go go to this creature. So, so the player doesn't take any. Okay, so it's not sense? one minus four or four minus one. No, nope, it's just it's just stop. You, you got it. Yeah. Okay. Now, there, great. There is, uh, you know, a lot of creatures will have different abilities. This one has flying. Flying is one of the simplest abilities to to explain, and okay. that's that uh, if uh, if the creature opposing doesn't also have flying or otherwise say that it can block creatures with flying, okay. then it can't block because it's just going to fly right over top of it. Okay. Um. So. So, uh, so and, there's lots of, like you said, this is a strategy game, and right. what you're explaining is a crazy level of strategy yeah. to it. On the cards, uh, there's amazing drawings or, yes. and art, artists, art, artwork. T- do you know anything about like the artists? Um, yes, actually, actually, you do. And uh, one of the, one of the yeah. things that a lot of players like to do is, you know, at the larger events, you know, like grand prix and opens and things like that. Here at the store? Um, no, 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 not not here at the store. Uh, these events would be so large that there wouldn't be room for the players in this store. Okay. Um, they they there would be anywhere from eight hundred to three thousand people. Okay. And where would they be held? Um, they're they're held in large convention centers uh, across the world. Um, the world. So, the world. Yes. Okay. Um, so this this game uh, actually some of the best players uh, for this game come from Japan. Okay. Um, so the the game was originated in uh, uh, Washington State. All right. Um, I believe it was Seattle, um, and since then has has grown to a worldwide phenomenon. Yes. Um, so has Starbucks. Yeah. They they had so. two claims to fame. So. Um, have people from here gone to uh, what are they called? Wizard uh, Prix? Grand, Grand Prix. Grand Prix. Okay. Yeah. And uh, actually, um, several several of us have. Really? Um, yeah. Us. So so yeah. you've been? Where did yeah, you go? I've, uh, I've been to. Uh, let's see. We the most recent one we did was uh, Grand Prix Atlanta. Um, okay. I did not perform very well. Oh, no. In that one, um, but uh, Eric. Uh, over there in the leather jacket, oh. he actually made day two of that competition. Okay. Um, so, so the way the way it works is that day is one, that a big thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it takes a lot of skill uh, to make day two because you have to have 
Um, day one is nine rounds, okay. right? And and regardless so of that's, your performance, that's you get nine times two planeswalkers mm -hmm. set across the table and play their cards and win. Yeah. Well, um, how no, long does a game now, take? And that that Grand Prix was. Uh, I believe it was like a thousand two hundred people at that wow, one. Wow, that's that's yeah. big. So, um, so it's uh, so each each player gets to play all nine rounds of the first day. Okay, right. So, so you will have nine matches, nine different people that you play against. But how long does a round play take? Uh, typically about an hour. Okay. Um, so, so there's there's a fifty minute time clock, right? So at the end of that time clock, if you still haven't finished, you have a certain number of turns to finish the game before before awesome. it's just over. Um, and if it ends with neither playing win neither player winning, then it's a draw. Okay. Um, so, but you want to win to go on to day two, right? All right. Um, so, in order to make day two, okay. you have to have a record of seven and two or better. Um, so that means seven wins and two losses. That's out that's of, pretty good. Yeah. Um, so. So and then day two I think was about six rounds, okay. um, and I believe Eric uh, was able to to go through all those rounds with only four losses. Great. So so okay. he he did he did pretty exceptional. He's just out outside of uh, be, being in the range for getting cash prizes out of the event. Oh nice. Yeah. Cool. And that's so that you go there for bragging rights and and, know, and cash. the prizes. Yeah. Fun. Um, so that. <coughs> all right. Um, so that particular event, um, the winner of the event got five thousand dollars from playing this game. From playing this game. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's that sounds pretty awesome as a a draw. You know, mm -hmm. you could go to that. How much does it cost to like start? If somebody had never done this before and just walked in the door like I just did. Mm -hmm. How much does it cost? Well, to the, begin? the the cool thing is that uh, Wizards of the Coast, the the company that that prints the uh, the cards and creates the game, okay. um, they actually send us a free. We walked over to the back. Free sample decks. Um, so this this is a, an example of one. And any new player coming in, they they get one of these just just to help them get started. Oh really? Um, yeah, and it's it's completely free. We we don't have to pay anything for it, and the player doesn't have to pay anything for it. Now is there so. a is there a chance that there's a super awesome card in there? Um, no, the card the cards are preset um, to, okay. to what cards you'll get. Now these these are great uh, great decks for learning the game. They have enough variety okay. um, that that you'll you'll become familiar with, with with the different aspects of the game but at, at the same time they're not so complex that they would be uh, th th that you would not be able to play it within the first day um, there are decks that exist with that level of complexity but typically you've been playing a while before you'll try to approach those decks that makes sense now I see on the box of the deck it says age 13 plus what are the age of the people that come in? Now, uh, the the age thirteen is a recommendation. It's not a strict requirement. Okay. Um, if if someone is below that age, they do they do have to have a uh, parental consent. Um, oh, to in, play in order to play. Great. Um, you know, now because, your space though is it? You have to be thirteen to come through the door. Or? No, absolutely not. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> Everybody shook their head at that. Tell yeah. me about the things that other you know under under thirteen without a parental consent could do here. Um, so, uh, so one of the one of the games that is really the most popular for for our, our kids under the age of thirteen is Pokemon. Okay. Um, so it's another trading card game. Um, it's similar similar to Magic in that you're exploring a fantasy reality through a strategy card game. Gotcha. Um, that you collect the cards for, build a deck, and then play with other people who've done the same thing. All right. Um, but the the themes around it are are a lot more simplified and sure. uh, you know a lot more approachable. And Pokemon uh, we've we've noticed is is more of a collector game than okay. one that people play a whole lot. Okay. Um, but you you do that here as well. When do mm -hmm. you have particular tournaments or no, times for right, that? Right now we we don't have Pokemon tournaments just because we we haven't had a, a, a big enough crowd. Gotcha. Um, but any any event that that six people come in right and they like. They, they say, "Hey, we want to do this event today. We can we can set that up for them on the spot." Okay. Um, so that that's gotcha. not a not a problem at all. As long as long as you have six people, you can play whatever you you want to play, awesome. and we'll we'll facilitate that event. Now, in the back of corner over here, though, I see a bookshelf that has board games on it, and also there's some TVs with like electronic game systems on yeah. it. And so, so what those are? Those, those are all free to play. Um, okay. So, so you know, we don't we don't sell the board games or the video games, but we we have them here for for people that just just want to come in, play a game, and hang out. 
Okay. Um, so, you know, me, myself growing up, you know, I grew up without without a whole lot of money, right? Okay. But I still wanted a place where I could go and hang out with my friends, you know, and the fact that I didn't have money wasn't a, wasn't a factor. Um, so so we, we've tried to facilitate that as well. You know, of course, we still have to pay the rent. Yeah. Right? So we, we sell the, the, the cards and the different Well, and games. I see some snacks over there. Yeah. You know, and, who and would snacks. not want to play Mario and have some Cheetos? Right. Exactly. That's my Friday night right there. All right. But but yeah so but we also wanted didn't want to alienate you know the people who didn't have ha, weren't in a financial situation to to be playing the games that you sure. would, would otherwise buy um, so we wanted to give them something something to do to be able to hang out with their friends as well that makes good sense so if someone had no dollars at all and had never been in before they could come up to the counter say I'm interested in one of the free decks please sit down start playing mm-hmm. with that or go over to the TV and start playing. PlayStation 2, I see some games, yeah. right? All yeah, right. and mo- most of our video games are, are more retro. Um, you know, we okay. don't have, like, a PS4. And retro means? Uh, older. Um, okay. So, so, so it's I old, am retro? Cool. Yes. Okay, yes. good. Great. You, you would fit the definition perfectly. Okay. Right? That old, but cool. So. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, now, you, uh, we mentioned the artwork, and you said yes, but uh, oh, yes. tell me about uh, that. Sorry, I got, got we got a little sidetracked uh, talking about uh, Grand Prix and th- places where you might meet these artists. Okay. okay. Um, so... So the uh, so the artists will will go to different events. You know they'll set up. They'll kind of show off. You know sometimes they'll have the original artwork that the image is taken from, um, and you can get them to sign sign cards and you know different uh, different places where their artwork appears. Um, right. One of my personal favorite is R K Post. Um, he did. That's a person. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And uh, is RK's he retro? Is, uh, yeah, he is actually very retro. Okay. Um, so. So he did. Uh, he did the art for a card called Arbor Elf, um, okay. and it's one, one of my favorite cards, and I love the artwork on it. And he's just a very, very laid back artist. You know, he's very approachable, easy to talk to. Okay. Um, so that that is that is one of my favorite. Now, on each of these cards, you can always know who did the art because there's usually a little uh, a little symbol that looks like the the tip of a paintbrush. Okay. Um, beside a name, and that name is the name of the artist that did the art that appears on the card. Okay. Um, so, so the the artists are are really, you know, of course you have your your pro players, right? Your celebrities of play. Your there artists are celebrities, are celebrities, of celebrities play. as well. Okay. Um, so they you can you know are there these, T-shirts that say celebrity of play? Um, and if not, well, there, you should so make that. There, there, there should be. That, that should exist. I, I haven't seen it yet. There are T-shirts that do have the pictures of these Pro Tour players on. Oh, awesome. Um, so I have seen those before. And oh, really? uh, what you need, Eric? Oh, you are Eric? You are Eric who went to Atlanta and survived to day two? <laughs> yeah, I did that. Well, tell me a joke, Eric. I don't have any. <laughs> okay, sorry to interrupt you. No problem. Okay. Let's see the transaction. Uh, well, while the transaction happens, let me pop around for a second right, and okay. see. I'm walking up to a random table. Do you guys know any jokes? I don't. No? Not off my head, no. No, oh, man. Okay. I've got one for you. What did one ocean say to the other ocean? What? Nothing. They just waved. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Now, what is that? It says Pirate Lab on it. What does that mean? Uh, it's just a bag for deck boxes. Well, what is like, your name? Um, I'm Chris. Chris? Hey, yeah. Chris. Um, yeah. um, this is a bag for deck boxes. Like, you can store your you know, your decks in here, like, for Magic Together. How many cards do you probably have there? Uh, All together, I would say probably about five or 600. Um, oh, cool. I could get more in here. I could probably get about two or 3,000 in here, but I only have, I have about no doubt. five or 600. Now, what, uh, how long have you been playing? A little over two years. Oh, so really? Fairly new. Yeah. I'm, now, I'm like some of these guys. How much money have you dropped on 500 Magic cards? These right here, probably because I play competitively now. There's probably, honestly, there's probably about two thousand dollars in this bag. Holy cow! Yeah, right now. So, well, okay. Um, but typically. That you know, three dollars a pack. You know, you'd look at maybe like fifty dollars. But I'm, I play competitively, so I'm, I have some of the best stuff that you can get. So you like buy the individual yeah, cards that are in there because you need a certain strategy. Yeah, it's all strategy, right? How many packs of Cheetos have you bought here? Uh, I bought a couple packs of Doritos. Oh, you're a Doritos person. Doritos guy, yes. Okay. 
Oh, okay, um, gotcha. There you go. <laughs> and you like coming here? I love coming here. It's, it's pretty fun. Um, actually, um, I didn't play Magic for a long time, and um, I love playing chess. And um, somebody once told me, if you love chess, you will probably love Magic. But it's a card. It's in a card game. Like there's more of a variance. Like um, you do almost the same thing in Magic as you would a chess game, but the variance does pay it play a part. As in, you know, the top deck of you know, you get to draw seven cards, no, so um, they could play against well, you. As in in chess, you know, you have the same the strategy every time, you know, right. you go, you know. But, I mean, in cards, it can vary based off luck, you know, so right. luck does play a part. But, um, most of it comes down to skill, you know, basically what you play on what turn, um, how you react to your opponent. That's what I like. I like the interaction with my opponents. Just, you know, oh, gotcha. it's kind of more of a mind game. Now, do you know like they're chess. called planeswalkers? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You call them opponents. Yep, opponents, yep. Okay, because I'm retro. Yep. Mm. Yep, all right. I'm going to go over there and see if they know any jokes. And it, but this is an awesome, awesome thing. Yeah, cool. Thank oh, you. Yes. Thank you. Do you guys know any jokes? <laughs> what that Mountain Dew joke you were workshopping? Workshop? <laughs> no. So I came to another table and it was just simply in. But that guy had a big box that he had his cards in. You have a binder with uh, pages. How many pages of cards do you have? Oh, well, let's see here. We got like. It's only 700 pages. Eight. Eight already. Awesome. And how long have you been playing? I'd say a year or two. Oh, yeah? Awesome. Alrighty. Well, good luck, guys. Thanks. Tell me what you like about coming here. Um, for me... Uh, and what's your name? Oh, I'm Sebastian Rose. Okay. Uh, for me, it's, it's just the community being able to actually come up and find people who play the same game and enjoy it and being able to, like, match them and, you know, get some practice in. Because not all my friends, you know, actually care for the game, play it. So, you know, it's good to come up here and find people who do and cool. share the same interests as you. And what's it like to sit at the same table as Eric, who's been to Atlanta and survived to day two? Well, awesome. I actually went to Atlanta as well. Um, <laughs> oh, and, and we've talked about this several times. Um, I, I made a couple of mistakes that led to me dropping out of the tournament he pretty quickly. He back on the day of the tournament. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. He's been practicing for a month. And he switches deck oh, on the day for, of the tournament. For months, I put hours of practice. So, like everybody at the table is smiling really big right now. That 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 was a big faux pas, apparently. It was rough. It was rough. Yeah, it, did, it, did it, not was, it was not good for me. I should have stuck with the deck that I was using. But good lesson learned, huh? I, oh yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Well, let me walk back this way. Oh. Well, I have already stolen your ocean joke. Do you know anything else? No, sorry. No, that was your one joke? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. All right. Now, how many cards do you have in your box? I have box? none yet, but I'm starting to build a deck soon. Oh, great, great, great. So you came here just to do homework? Uh, we're starting a D&D &D campaign. So. Oh, that's gotcha. a good deal. So, not homework? Not homework. Okay, good deal. All righty, talk to you guys later. Let me walk back over here. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else you want? What are your hours? Um, you know, so, from here. So the hours are uh, three in the afternoon to eleven in the, at evening. Um, every day. Every day except for Wednesday. Okay. You know, we, we need to take a day to rest. So. Makes sense. So three to eleven, right? Mm -hmm. What about winter special events or things like that? When will you suggest a, a novice to come in? Um, so so typically the best the best day for someone just wanting to get into uh, the game of magic, the best day to come in is Fridays um, because you've got you've got the most people. You've got uh, you know it's it's a good day to just kind of kind of get in and get get an idea of how how things are done gotcha um and, and it's our our most popular weekly event okay so friday what time um that that usually starts at about six okay um so so if you if you want to play in the event you probably want to get here a little a little earlier so around right. five 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 thirty okay so. that makes good sense one quick, as I walked in, there were some walking sticks up on the wall. What are those? Yeah. Um, so those uh, now the, there's there's a second side to this. You know, it's it's uh, Knights Lounge Games and Gallery. Okay. Um, so so the gallery aspect, um, the walking sticks, my uncle made. Okay. Um, and uh, they they are for sale. Well, what is his name? Um, uh, Boyd. Boyd. Okay. Yeah. 
Some um, boys walking six. Yep, and uh, the paintings uh, are all done by my wife. And oh, and what is your name again? Keenan. Keenan. Hello, how are you? I'm doing good. Okay, good. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, and, and of course, they're all for sale as well. Gosh, they're like large format. They're like, what is, how long, like three feet by five feet or something like that? Um, around 30 I don't, inches, some of them, 32, okay. I think is okay. the largest. Yeah. All righty, but so. they're full color, you know, to the edge, and they're they're themed. Like this. have you ever thought about making cards or submitting your art for card art? Um, there's, I don't want to plagiarize Basically. Oh, it's yeah. The, no, no, no. He was, he was talking oh. about submitting your art oh. to be put on cards. I'm uh, not sure how they do that. Well, uh, so so the process for submitting <laughs> a... <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been into magic? You know it seems uh, everything. Well, uh, I've I've been playing magic since my... It, it was either my last year of middle school or my first year of high school. I believe it was my first year of so high school. So two years? Uh, no, no I, I actually... Uh, I graduated high school back in 2006, graduated from Berea College in 2010. Okay. Um, so I, I first started playing the game. Um, I guess that would make it 2002. All right. Um, so at, and it's 2018, so yep. 16 years? Yeah, 16 years. Gotcha. Um, so, actually, more than half my lifetime. Um, wow. So, so yeah. So I've been been playing a long time. Um, as far as more competitively, you know, like F and M tournaments, things like that. I didn't get into F and M. Friday Night Magic. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, so that's the that's the typical acronym uh, you used for Friday Night Magic, which of course has always been Wizards' most popular uh, tournament, and that is a tournament that every store that uh, that sell sells magic. Um, as you know, as a big, you know, every uh, small business that sells magic, sure. um, that is a tournament they are required to have. Um, so, so you can you can find an F and M at any in any city you go to. Um, so it seems pretty regulated. It's not mm-hmm. just you know you you wing it. Right. What? Yeah. And the uh, the game was invented back in uh, by Richard Garfield, I believe was his uh, name. In back Seattle. In, yeah, in in Seattle back in uh, 1995. Okay. Um, so they have had a long time to really to really Perfect. hone down what works and what doesn't. Um, so so that's why that's why there's you know there's there's a lot of advised things and then gotcha. there are certain things that are regulated because they know it just won't work without those things. Makes good sense. Yep. So. Alrighty. Now, if somebody wanted to call first or contact you, what would a telephone number be? Or uh, the contact? telephone number is two two eight zero one zero one. Okay, two two eight zero one zero one area code eight five nine. Eight five nine. Yes. Is there an e? Oh, you've got a Facebook page. We do. We do have a Facebook page. Um, you can find us as Knights Lounge. Um, okay. We are the only Knights Lounge on on Facebook. In the whole so. world. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Knights K N I G H T apostrophe S Lounge. Yep. L-O-U. Like the chess piece. Oh, Lounge. Uh, Knights. Knights. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, one question with that: Where did the name come from? Um, so, so the name was actually debated over for a long time. When, uh, uh, when, when we first opened, there there were four of us. Uh, okay. Now, now we're down to two owners, and that's just just me and Kina. Oh. And uh, so, but originally it was uh, me. So you're Kina. the master plainsman. You won planeswalker. Sorry, um, your not, opponent. No, not, not quite. Sorry. Um, sure as far as far as the gameplay goes, I, I'm probably about seventh best in the store of the people I'm looking around seeing right now. Um, so I'm not wow. I'm not the best. I'm okay. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but sorry, the store. But yeah. So so when we when we originally started, it was uh, Ira Redman, Anthony Estru, um, and then my, myself, Dennis Sparks, and Keena Sparks. Okay. Um, so so that that was actually when when I first brought the idea forward. Um, my my idea for the name was uh, Berea Games and Activities because I already had a Facebook page where we were getting together okay. you know, to play different games under that name, um, and you know of course that does not sound nearly as cool as what we wanted. So, <laughs> um, so we got to thinking about it. We were like, okay, what you know we need to theme it around something, um, and what, what we settled on was that even though each of us played different games, you know, um, Anthony uh, played. Uh, mostly uh, like tabletop games like Warhammer 40k, um, D&D, things like that. And he Risk? also played, uh, and, and some Risk, yeah. Okay, and uh, Monopoly? You get that uh, Battleship? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. And so, so you know, but he also played some Magic. Um, Ira Redman, his his game of focus was Yu-Gi-Oh, right, which we do, do still carry today. All right. Um, yeah. And you know, then of course, my my game was magic, and then Kina. Well, she was just really good with finance, so we had to have her. Yeah, um, there you go. So, 
So, you know, but the one thing, the one game that we all played and we're, we're all fairly proficient at it was Rook. Uh, was yeah. actually chess. Oh, good. Okay. Um, and uh, me, me personally, uh, I cannot beat a player that is good at using their knight. Uh, uh, I just can't do it. The, the The moves are too unpredictable, and it's you know it's strategically a very you know probably your most valuable piece on the board. Um, so so we all we all kind of agreed that that was the the piece to focus on in a game. Okay. Um, and so you know we were like, okay, now how you know so we know we want it to be about the knight, right? All right. Um, and then we were like, okay, which you know like now how do we want the atmosphere to be? And we we're like, well, we want people to come, oh. hang out, be laid back, you know. So that's where the lounge part. Is. Okay. Good. So. That makes that is super. I mean, that such thought went into it. Yeah. That that's good. It's a it's a place of intention. You can tell that I'm looking around and several people have come in as I've been here. There's almost twenty people here, so that congratulations. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's that's pretty regular for Friday Night Magic and you know, not not all these people are here to play magic. Some of them are uh, you know, we've got a D and D group, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, it's sure. a, a tabletop role playing game. Gotcha. Um, you know, we've got some people that are just here to play play the video games. Um, but the vast majority of the people here are are here for for magic. Okay. Um, so so that's you know we we got a pretty pretty good diverse crowd. Do you believe in magic in a young girl's heart? <laughs> yes. Okay. Good. 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 All right. Thank you all so much for talking to me for a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and go. Again, thanks for talking. All right, thank I'll have you. sent people that way. And again, this is the Bria Podcast, so you can go over to thebriapodcast.com or like us on Facebook at Bria Podcast. Okay? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Today is why I stay.